If ever there is one driver which can propel our county to full scale develop status, then it is fuel quality skills training. SDF is here to support businesses to train their staff. All that we're trying to do is to build a very solid human capital base. We shall profile beneficiaries of SDF. 66,894 Ghana cities. The requisite technical expertise, PETAG, have been struggling to keep pace. SDF for my ISCA. Who is going to provide the service? And our main focus has been on mass production of garments. There was a lot of talk about Sakawa. Are you able to use these same processes to also apprehend people? That, that is correct. Our research showed that Ghana was at the number eight in the world when it comes to cyber. So please make a date with me, Albert Tankra, this and every Wednesday at eight o'clock on GTV. SDF is an initiative by the government of Ghana with support from the World Bank and Danida. In today's knowledge-based economy, what you earn depends on what you learn, says Bill Clinton, former U.S. President. On this note, I welcome you to another exciting and revealing edition on SDF Diaries. Today, we laser beam on Ghana Technology University College. Yes, they were also beneficiaries of SDF. Today, we want to find out from them what has SDF done for them. We also, of course, we have uh, in our court here the fund manager from SDF. We want to find out also from him what informed their decision to support Ghana Technology University College. Stick and stay with me. Don't go nowhere. I'll be right back. Information technology has taken the center stage in the development of the private sector worldwide. And Ghana is no exception. The growth of many industries, including the service sector, has been IT-driven, ranging from the development of the telecommunications, banking and finance, manufacturing, agriculture, construction, hospitality and other sectors of the Ghanaian economy. One of the most important IT resources is the Internet. The Internet is an indispensable tool for the facilitation and development of businesses. It opens the door for international business transactions to be carried out from within a country without necessarily traveling to another country. One of the most important resources of the Internet is its use in facilitating financial transactions within the banking industry. The foundation of the Ghanaian banking system are built on cyber technology, comprising the Internet, intranet and other systems that facilitate efficient networking and communication. One of the key issues for the financial sector, especially banks, has been the security of their systems. This is more an issue in view of the proliferation of cyber crime in Ghana. We initiated a small project to look at cyber crime in Ghana. Uh, I think we call it Sakawa. You know, um, I think initially we wrote a proposal to one of the agents, they didn't fund it. And we decided to fund it all in-house and so we got some of our staff and some of our students to travel to different parts of the country, including Swedro, which I, I understand is one of the key uh, Sakawa places in the country. Also like a research. Yeah, yeah it's a pure, yeah, yeah. pure research. So we did that. And then in addition to that research, we also organized a few workshops. So we invited the police, the army, and a few of the private institutions involved in uh, crime to come. So we did that. So we did that. And then after about six months when we finished the project we also called them back and we presented our results so i think out of that we decided to expand this so when we saw the sdf program we thought a smart way is to actually make this cyber crime because our research showed that ghana was at the number eight in the world when it comes to cyber crime you know which was kind of shocking because i think most people believe that here in ghana when there's a cyber crime it has to do with nigerians but the research showed you know, otherwise to some extent. And so we thought this is the right way to get the people of Ghana, to get the politicians, the leadership to understand that this is a crime. It's a big problem. It's a big, big problem in the country. We need to find a way. So we wrote a proposal when SDF came up with the uh, uh, RFP, we responded. Cybercrime takes place in various forms, ranging from fraudulent internet practices, commonly called Sakawa to the hacking of the systems of banks and financial institutions. 
In fact, Ghana is currently ranked 7th on the list of the leading countries with the prevalence of cybercrime worldwide. To effectively combat this problem, there has been the need for specialized skills training to ensure staff of institutions that have issues with cybercrime to undergo such trainings. The problem was the absence of a training module and curriculum that provides training in cybersecurity in Ghana. In view of this, banks and other financial and security agencies, including the Bureau of National Investigation and Ghana Police Service, spent huge sums of money to sponsor staff training in cybersecurity abroad. Apart from the huge costs involved, it also limited the number of staff that could access the training. Usually when we talk about cyber security, we're talking about computer security and that of information security. And with regards to this particular project, we're talking about whenever there is a computer crime or a crime that has been committed using computer or crime against information. Mm -hmm. And when we look at it, for instance, most of us think of when there is a hacking or any intrusion of any sort to computer. Okay, whenever such a thing happens, that is said to be because if you have no proper authorization or permission, so to speak, to have entrance or disclosure onto a particular information, you're said to have violated the computer's um, either privacy or confidentiality or its integrity, depending on um, what sort of uh, interruption mm -hmm. or attack that was facilitated. So basically what we are doing is to look at those crimes and how do we actually do the investigation with regards to the computers itself because you, people would uh, use the computers to commit some crime of assault and try to delete the information. For instance, you send an email which is purported to be harassing somebody, mm. which we call cyber stalking or anything of the sort, or use it to commit some crime. And then you try to delete it. Now, when you try to delete it, in your opinion, you've deleted it. But where really does the information go? It still resides on the computer. Now, we as cybersecurity experts or forensic, we're able to use appropriate tools to fish out or, as it were, to recover this information which we can also use even in the court of law. So what we, use, we do is that we find what we call e-evidence, electronic evidence, which is forensically, because of the methods that we follow, forensically sound and admissible also in the court of law. In December 2011, the Ghana Telecom University College, a leading IT and telecom training institution in Ghana, submitted a proposal to SEF to support in the development of an internet security curriculum for use in training the private sector and other public sector stakeholders who then had to sponsor staff abroad in order to access training in internet security. The scope of the proposed project, which was under the third window of SEF, where training institutions have the opportunity of submitting proposals to develop innovative training modules and curriculum required by the private and public sectors in their development. Well, they did apply as, as we invited applicants from across the country and the application was quite unique in the sense that there was lots of demand from industry, from the banking sector, security agencies for training that doesn't exist in Ghana. Normally they would go abroad and get a training at a very high cost and they express interest in GTUC supporting them to develop a curriculum, okay, made ready so they can come and get a training at GTUC. And that was one of the things that we were looking for, getting institutions to be innovative, to develop training programs that industry requires, is willing to buy into. When we got the application, we looked at it and it was perfect, so we just said, let's go. Okay, so it was unique, out of the ordinary. It was unique, it addressed a specific need that mm. industry has expressed. Mm. And so we felt that instead of wasting the money traveling up and down, why don't you have capacity here in Ghana? Mm. Develop it locally and have everybody else who would want the training to come and buy it. Mm. Grants under the curriculum development window are used to fund the following. Cost of developing innovative curriculum to train both private and public sectors. 
Cost of developing innovative training modules. Cost of training instructors on how to teach using the innovative modules. Cost of piloting the curriculum. The cost of providing teaching tools, equipment and aids to facilitate the instruction of the innovative training curriculum. SDF approved a grant of 396,864 Ghana cities for the Ghana Telecom University College to enable it to develop an internet security curriculum and set up a training laboratory to train the private and public sector stakeholders in internet security and cyber crime prevention strategies. The grant was also used to train lecturers of the university in how to teach using the newly developed curriculum in cyber crime. The university also contributed 132,288 Ghana cities, representing 25% of the total cost of implementing the project. The, the features for the curriculum were geared towards training certificates as well as bachelor's and also further to a master program. Now the key components of the curriculum were first to take participants or trainees through the development from information, what really constitutes information and its processing, right from the basics like the binaries and the calculations involved, arithmetic and so on. And then we jump into the actual basics of forensic. The role of foreign, digital forensic in an organization, for instance, so that not only um, would they have um, theoretical training, but also with the practical sense and to be able to fit into industry, especially in, in its proper place in Ghana. Life and or dead, dead um, acquisition of uh, evidence. Usually when something happens, a crime scene or even in the corporate setup, when something has um, happened and we need as forensic experts need to um, explore or to investigate into the circumstances that led to the um, crime or to the fraud, computer fraud. Preview. We sometimes would need to shut the machine off and sometimes we need to collect certain evidence even when the machine is on and when it's on we call it the live acquisition and when it's been shut off we call it dead position of data. And then also we go deeper into the general data acquisition as evidence and there are typical procedures that we need to follow such as um, a custody, uh, the chain of custody so that the, the data that we've collected will not be compromised or can be presented in the court of law for instance as qualified um, evidence. Today the university has completed the development of the curriculum in internet security and network forensics. It has also set up a state-of-the-art laboratory for training in the newly developed innovative curriculum. ISA is a consultant who led in developing the curriculum. In a nutshell, the curriculum is geared towards training people at the certificate level, which could be a technician, and then at the engineer level, bachelor's, and a master level, which could take a managerial role in organizations. Since mounting the course, among the first to have undergone training, is Solomon Mantia, who is an IT staff in one of the leading financial institutions in Ghana, he shares his experiences practicalizing the skills learned in cybersecurity at his workplace. I believe that the program itself was still at quite quite well because the models that were covered in the program have a direct bearing on what I do in industry. The program was forensic computing and it was made up of five key modules. First one being uh, internet and information security, network planning and management, ethical hacking, legal aspects of computing, and then forensic methods. In a nutshell, I would like to say that it's been a great experience. I'm, I'm very grateful for the experience. I've learned so much and most times I, I come across um, concepts or items in my role that I can quickly trace back to my days um, during the program because I picked up very, very important um, um, aspects of it from lecturers and also from, from um, some industry experts as well. 
I'm very grateful and I believe that this program has been very beneficial for uh, my role. Here. Internet security was part of the models I learned in my master's level. As a lecturer, I would um, like to tell all students that since most of our information are gotten from the internet, day in day out we go there to get information and even do other activities. Depending on what the, the site you go to, one has to be very careful because we have all kinds of internet fraud or crimes on the, the internet through the internet. Mm -hmm. Learning this program has been very, very important to me because I have realized the kind of vulnerabilities out there in the world about cybercrime and then trying to combat it is my major goal now. I would like to thank SDF for giving me the opportunity to do this program. It's been very, very, very helpful. Research was a pro problem to me right after undergrad. I'm so helpful that now I know where to go to and how to get my information. I'm so grateful. Um, I studied for a master's degree in software mm -hmm. development and I currently work at DTZ um, as a teaching assistant. Yeah, during the course, um, we took this particular module was based on internet and information security. The course has actually helped me, um, you know, um, in a whole lot of aspects, not just software development, but then, you know, even how to think and, you know, in my lifestyle and all that, you know. I've learned um, that software design and then software development is not just about programming. Now, programming just covers about 20% of what software development. Now, behind software development, you have to know the security aspects involved. So I'm very grateful for the course. Yeah. With a curriculum now in place, the security service is positioned to take advantage and enroll their staff, especially from the Criminal Investigations Department, to acquire innovative skills in cyber security and network